Uh, from prospects for foods, we have some frozen chicken wings, uh, meatballs and pierogies with some lovely sauces we're going to be using. Also, Bob's Ultimate Meat has uh, given us some wonderful bacon. And we have some fresh produce from Gibraltar Fruits and Veggies. Also, to kick things up a notch, we have a couple of household items you probably have around, like butter, maple syrup, and some herbs, just to kick things up a notch. So basically, we're going to take the easy route, so you're not in the kitchen all day long. We're just going to get them out of the bag, and we're going to cook them from frozen right on this pan. So you really want to get in there, just take a few extra moments where you're getting this ready, just to make sure all your chicken wings are happy. They're spread out. They've got a little bit of space to do their thing. You don't want them stack too high. Nice and spread out. We have our oven preheated to 350 degrees. And the same thing with pierogies. Traditionally, people want to boil pierogies until they float. It's a great way to do it. But this, by roasting them in the oven nice and slow, we're going to eliminate the need for you to be in the kitchen around your boiling water. So once again, we're going to just take a little extra time. Make sure they're all happy on the pan, nice and spread out. Now, instead of standing over top of boiling water, we're just going to have to rotate these a couple times through the cooking. So that's it. We've got our pierogies and our chicken wings ready to go in. And now since we're at 350, we don't have to stand over top of our oven all day long and hover over it. We've got some play time. So when I start smelling the chicken wings, I can go, I can move them around, make sure they all stay happy in there together. About halfway through the cooking time, so probably about 12 minutes in, we're going to flip them around and just to make sure the cooking stays evenly all the way through. So we got our bacon, another time saver we've talked about before is simply using scissors to cut it instead of using your kitchen knife. So I'm going to slice up this bacon here, get it ready for the pan. This is going to add some wonderful flavor to our pierogies once they come out of the oven. And I've got my pans preheating, they're both at a medium high heat, so we don't cook them too fast. We want the bacon to slowly get its way up there so we don't overcook it. And the reason why we're cutting up the bacon and cooking it off first is we're going to use some of that fat later to fry up our pierogies to bring them back up to temperature, add some more flavor in there. And also, we're going to be doing two different styles of, with these meatballs. We're going to be doing a traditional uh, Quebec style with an infused maple syrup and sage. And we're going to use something more uh, sports oriented. We're going to use one of these sauces here from Prospector Foods and toss them in there. Let's give my uh, scissors a quick wipe here. Open up my meatballs. Once again, we're cooking these straight from frozen. So pull them out of your freezer, stick them in your pan, and cook them up. It's really easy, really simple, and it's going to be very tasty when we're done, too. Okay, and while we're going to go over to our, our stove top, we're going to be making a traditional sauce here. It's an old chef's favorite. It's really easy. We're going to use just butter. This is salted butter. You can use sweet butter if you want, which is the same thing basically without the salt. It's more of a pastry butter. And since we're already going to be on the stovetop, we're going to have the residual heat there from the oven and the stovetop. So it's just going to melt your butter without us having to pay attention to it. Now you can melt your butter first and then add Frank's into it. Now I find I like spice, but Frank's isn't very spicy. It's got a mild heat. This one is the extra hot, but also because the dairy of the butter and the fat in there is going to bring the temperature down a little bit more so it's mild. And that way you can please the whole crowd as opposed to just the people who have hot wings. Okay, and now we're going to go over to the stovetop. I'm only going to put half the meatballs in right now because we're going to do two different flavors. I'm doing the bacon here in a non-stick pan, so obviously we're going to use wood or rubber or silicone. Do never you want to use uh, steel because it will scratch the bottom and then you don't have a non-stick pan anymore. Okay, now we've got our bacon and our first round of meatballs are starting to get happy on the stovetop. That gives us time to prepare our fresh vegetables. So I'm going to be roasting some garlic. By roasting the garlic, it's going to get sweeter and more flavorful and it's not going to have that sharp contrast on your palate and then give everyone garlic breath. So basically, I'm just going to cut the end off the garlic. Some big, fresh Ontario garlic that's gorgeous. Okay, now, the reason why I've cut the bottom off is because once it gets soft and it's roasted, I can just squeeze it out. Got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil here. I'm just going to dip it in here, just so the garlic doesn't stick to our tin foil. I can hear my bacon starting to get really happy. Give it a quick stir so it cooks evenly. And I don't drain the fat out until the very end. The fat helps it cook more evenly, plus all that flavor is in there. I'm starting to get some nice color and crunch on these meatballs, so I'm going to turn them down a little bit and just warm them through. 
So we've got our garlic ready here. I'm just wrapping it up here in the tin foil. I'm just gonna throw it straight into the oven. That's pretty much it. And then when it's done, it's gonna be soft and creamy and so good for you. Every time I peek in the oven to do something else, I take a quick look. And since we're at 350, like I said, it's going slow. We don't have to worry about rushing or burning our food. So it just keeps it going happy there. I've got my onion here. We're gonna be sauteing some onions up later in the bacon fat to add to our pierogies. Now basically we're gonna do just a nice thin sliced onion, also called a julienne in the kitchen, which basically just means thin slice. And we're trying to do nice even cuts. If the onions are all the same size, they cook all at the same speed and with the same temperature. If you have big chunks and little chunks, the little chunks get overcooked and the big ones aren't done yet. So that's really the key to cooking. The difference between a good chef and a great chef is their, their cuts in their food. We've got our onions ready. Now I'm gonna tackle the chives. So basically, we've got some nice fresh chives here. If you keep them all together, it's gonna be a lot easier to chop. Basically, we're going to infuse sour cream, which is going to take our pierogies to yet another level. And since they're all onions, they're all the same family, I don't really worry about cleaning my cutting board between onions and chives. Nice, tiny. No one wants a big, huge chunk of onion in their mouth. Going to give my blade a quick wipe. If you wipe your blade every time, you keep the edge on your blade sharper. That means you don't have to be sharpening your knife every, t every time you want to use it. Vitamin C, too. If you're cutting things like red peppers, grapefruit, oranges, that'll take the edge off your knife really quick. So it's nice to wipe it down real after every use. Okay, so like I said before, when we're infusing things, the longer it gets together, the happier it becomes, the more the flavors permeate each other. So we've got some good old typical sour cream, and I'm just gonna put that in there and just let it get happy until we're ready to serve it. Then it's all gonna go together uh, with its flavor profile. Just gonna give it a quick stir. Just gonna smush it all in there, and then the flavor of the chives since we just freshly cut them, the natural juices and aromas are going to permeate the cream. And it's going to stick it back in the fridge until it's time to serve it. Our bacon is getting really close to being done here. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit so it finishes cooking evenly. And while my bacon is starting to finish off, I'm going to set up what we call a grease trap. So I got some just good old paper towel. Okay, now my bacon is crispy. It's where I want it to be. Off goes my power. And I'm just gonna prop this up a little bit. My fat will drain down. Let that sit and you can actually watch the, the fat will just kind of drain out of there. While I'm over here, I just keep checking on my meatballs. If one escapes, don't worry. I'm gonna throw that right back in there. And the heat's gonna, if there was any sort of germs or uh, contamination, it's gonna be cooked off in that pan anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. Now you can see we've got nice little color on there. They're warmed through. I can actually turn these guys off now. Our butter's starting to do its thing as well. Okay, now I've got the bacon fat slipping away from our bacon bits. I'm gonna come in here and just start scooping it out right onto the paper towel. We're gonna use this bacon two different ways. We're gonna saute our onions in it, so we bring the bacon, the onions, and the pierogies all together. And we're gonna use some of this fat for our second meatball recipe, and we're gonna make it more of a Quebec uh, breakfast style meatball. So I've got a glass jar here, so I, I can reuse some of this fat. So I, by using a mason jar or something similar, it's thick, it's, um, it's tempered, so it can handle the heat. I wouldn't want to use something like a thin glass, like from a, a dollar store type product. You'd want to use something more substantial. Um, you could even use an old aluminum can that you were going to recycle anyway. Okay, so we have some bacon left in our pan, bacon fat that is. I'm going to turn this back up to a low medium heat. The slower we cook onions, the more sugar comes out and the sweeter they become. So we're going to bring that back up to temperature. And then we're going to switch off our meatballs and we're going to start a second recipe there. Okay, well I've got our bacon fat heated up now for onions, but while I'm over at the oven, I might as well check on the, on the chicken wings and the pierogies just to make sure they're still getting happy in there. Everything looks good. Nothing's burning. So the next time we look at, we're probably going to shuffle them around just to make sure they cook evenly. Okay, now it's time to saute our onions. This is essentially probably our most time consuming thing. And it really isn't that bad. Just need some TLC at the beginning. I'm gonna break them up. And the lower the heat, like I said, the easier it's gonna be for your cooking time. We won't have to check them so much because they're not gonna be cooking too fast. Low and slow. 
Now we're going to sauce up our first uh, round of meatballs. Um, what we have here from Prospector Foods is a gorgeous sauce here. It's an onion garlic sauce. And um, really, if you look at what's going on inside there, there's not, uh, there's not a lot of fillers. There's nothing really bad for you. It's just lots of flavor. A little trick there is open up your jar. You can pop it on the bottom. If that still doesn't work, you can poke a hole in the top. You won't be able to use the lid again, but it's an easy way to open it up. So basically, I'm just going to use a mixing bowl. This pan's going to be hot, but this has got a built-in warmer already on it. So basically, all I'm doing, I'm going to put these guys in the bowl. You can, see, you can see the nice color on there. Okay. Now, because the meatballs are already warm, we're going to, going to thin down the sauce pretty much uh, right away because of the natural heat, the residual heat. Now, you can go as saucy as you want. You can use a little bit for just a tiny bit of flavor. I'm going to go a bit of medium, try and please, uh, please the whole crowd. So it's just the same idea as infusing our sour cream or our butter. This sauce is going to coat the, the meatballs and kind of interact together. When we go to warm these up later, what's going to happen is we're going to start to caramelize that sauce and give it even more of a crunch and more of a bold flavor. Every chance I get to come back to my stove top, I just give my onions a little stir. They don't need a lot of attention, but you keep them moving and then they'll cook more evenly. Okay, now for a second recipe on the meatballs. We're going to set this back up. Roughly the same heat again. We want about medium heat. Once again, to crunch out the outer shell of the meatball. And we're going to use that heat to infuse uh, a maple syrup and sage uh, dressing on it. So I've got our meatballs stuck away in the fridge. Now, since I just turned my pan on, it's not ready. If you want to cook fast, what you want to do is you want to warm up your burner, then warm up your pan, and then put your food in. You're going to have a better product in the end, and your cooking times will be greatly reduced. So now we're waiting for a pan to come back up to temperature. I'm already over here at the oven. I'm just going to pull out my chicken wings, my pro yeast, just give them a quick little stir. That way I know they're all getting happy and no one's going to get overcooked. I like to use tongs, that way I can get right in there. Less chance I'm going to actually drop them on the floor as well. So I'm just looking to make sure everyone's cooking at the same time, moving around a bit. Since we're using the parchment paper, we won't be worried about sticking. And once again, because of the aluminum foil we're using, it's going to be an easy cleanup at the end. Less dishes is a happier host. And once again, same thing with the pro yeast. These are a bit more delicate. You try not to puncture the dough, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. It's going to taste great no matter what. And back in the oven. Okay, we've safely rotated our chicken wings and our pierogies. We've got our cast iron pan right back up to the temperature we want. And go our second round of meatballs. Now, this is where we saved our, our bacon fat for as well. So we've got the flavor of the bacon, obviously in the bacon going into our onions as well. But an old style, uh, very, very traditional Quebec and you know, Northern Ontario is uh, pork and beef meatballs with sage and maple syrup. Uh, these are all beef meatballs, but we're gonna use the flavor of the pork fat to, to simulate that. And you don't want too much, a little bit of bacon fat goes a long way. Like just keep the meatballs stirring. It's going for a nice golden brown color. So I'm letting the meatballs get happy, do their thing. I don't want to rush this. The thing with maple syrup is because it's, uh, it's got a high sugar content, it can burn pretty easily. So we're going to add this in at the very end. We're only going to use a little bit just because it's expensive, but it's really, really flavorful. And we got some ground up sage here too to, uh, to mimic that old uh, habitant flavor of the meatballs. Okay, now we've got some gorgeous colored meatballs once again. And like I said before, because the maple syrup is so high in sugar, we don't want to be using too much heat with it. Otherwise, we're going to burn it. Take it off. And smell that gorgeous pork fat and the meat all coming together. You can hear my stomach starting to talk to me here. So excited to eat all this wonderful food. That's some maple syrup. Now, you can go heavy or light. I find... You want to balance everything out. You don't want to taste too much maple syrup and miss out on the flavor of the meatballs or vice versa. So I go a little bit easy. You can always add more maple syrup or anything else like that, but you can't take it back out. Now I've got ground sage here, just so it disperses evenly through. Now the trick is once I get the sage in there, you want to toss it right away. And sage is one of those spices that will help you with your digestion. So after all these fun foods and you're sitting on the couch and you're enjoying some beverages, this sage is going to help your body process the meat we've already eaten. No, I don't want to go too much. Sage is very strong as well. So I've got my maple syrup, my sage in there. And I'm just going to move them around a little bit to coat every meatball evenly.
chicken wings are getting nice and crispy. And essentially, with these pierogies, all we have to do is warm them through as well. Since our chicken wings are pre-cooked, and pierogies is really just dough and cheese, very, very simple recipe. So now our wings are ready for us. Since they were pre-cooked, all we were really doing is warming them through, and we want this. You can smell them. Now because they're a buffalo style wing, they've been dredged in flour. So instead of it just being the, the chicken skin that's getting crunchy, actually the flour is, is getting crunchy too and allowing us that other little level of, uh, of crunchiness in there. We've got another gorgeous sauce here from Prospector Foods. The sweet and spicy Thai sauce, which is spicy but not too bad. So I'm gonna just pop the top on that. And we've got, also got our butter and our Frank's Red Hot Sauce melting over here together. I'm just gonna take a quick look at that. She's pretty much ready to go. Now we were trying to use the residual heat from the oven and the other burners to kind of melt that down. If the butter's not melted, just throw it on low for a couple minutes and it'll melt right through, easy peasy. Remembering the onions every time I go over here. And what you're gonna start seeing is happen is they're gonna go from white to translucent and they're gonna start getting this brown caramelized color. The natural sugars from the onions are coming out and uh, adding more flavor. And that's exactly what we want. Um, essentially, when the wings are still hot is when you wanna get your sauce on them. If you let them cool down too much, the skin is going to close back up and the natural pores in the meat won't accept the sauce as readily. Okay, sweet Thai chili from Prospector Foods. And it's the same with everything. You can always add more sauce, but you can't take it away. So go easy, try and please the whole crowd. If somebody wants more, you can always add it on the side. No big deal. Now you can probably, if, you got, uh, if you're brave enough, you can just toss them in here like this. If you're worried about splashing on your, uh, your clothes or on the floor, just get your tongs in there and, and shuffle them around. And our second ones. Okay, we have our, our butter and sauce mixture here, which is just basically 50-50. It's half Frank's red sauce and half of it's butter. I'm swirling here just to kind of bring it all together. The, the uh, milk solids will start separating from the butter as it melts. So we just swirl a little, little bit. And you can always Get your finger in there and taste test your product before you put it on your chicken wings. That way if I find this too spicy right now, I can mild it down by adding more butter. Or if you want it more spicy, you can add more hot sauce or chili flakes in there. That's perfect, that's just where I want it to be. I got a little bit of heat, but not so much that it's gonna burn your face off. Okay. Now, our pierogies. Now essentially these are done, but we've got all these fun ingredients we're gonna add to them. So we're gonna plate these, we're gonna have the chive infused sour cream, we've got our crunchy bacon bits, and we also got our caramelized onions. We're gonna put that all together in a nice, nice platter, and it's great food for sharing. So if you remember, we wrapped up the garlic in tin foil at the beginning of the show uh, to soften it up and take away that pungent flavor. So I'm just gonna check inside to make sure it's good. Essentially if I squeeze it and it's soft, it's just ready to go. Just gonna let that garlic cool down a bit so I can get in there with my hands. You don't wanna be burning your fingerprints off. And also, while I'm over here, I'm looking at my onions and they've got that gorgeous caramel colored there. So I'm gonna know that they're ready. I'm gonna turn them off and just let them do their thing. So I got the whole bulb of garlic open now and I can go in there and I can squeeze it. And it's got a little bit of give. I think I can go for a little bit longer. 
Okay, well now that our pierogies are ready and all of our accoutrements are ready, we've got the roasted garlic. I'm gonna pull that out of the oven right now. And just while I'm plating up these pierogies, it's gonna cool down enough for me to squeeze out those bulbs. So our first batch of pierogies, this is a more traditional recipe. This is something that uh, my mom used to make me all the time when I was a kid. And usually if you go to a restaurant and you're ordering pierogies, this is probably how they'll come out. So we've got our wonderful baked pierogies. Now I'm gonna plate this all on one big platter, but you could have it, just your pierogies, and have everything else on the side. People could dish it up themselves. I kind of like having less dishes to do at the end of my meal. First version, like I said, is very, very typical. So I've got our infused sour cream here with the chives. Well, that's a big blob, it's right on the top here. Then as people go to grab their pierogies, they can get however much sour cream they want. Crispy bacon. And we've cooked a whole pound here. You don't have to use it all. You could save some for a salad. And of course, our caramelized onions. And if you can see that color there, we've changed them from just a normal sweet onion you could throw into your, your uh, salads into something that's creamy and sweet and golden. I'm gonna pop that right on top. One more dollop on top, just for a little bit of presentation. And there you go, traditional pierogies. Now our second one is a little bit more health conscious. Um, we have dairy uh, in the pierogies already because of the cheddar cheese, but we're not gonna use any meat. So if you have a vegetarian, this is a little bit of an option for them. We've got some extra virgin olive oil here. Just gonna use my brush and just start to drizzle around. Now, you don't have to use extra virgin olive oil, but the flavor is there and it's so healthy for you. This is a healthy oil. It actually helps your body get rid of other fats. So don't be afraid to use um, extra virgin olive oil aplenty. Now this is, you could just use any old sea salt and grind it up. This is a uh, Himalayan pink mountain salt. Now you can be as liberal as you want, but like I said before, you can't always add more salt, but you can't take it away. And we've got our garlic that's been cooling off here. I'm just slow roast it in the oven while we're doing the other things here. Now if you see where we cut it off at the bottom, it's got these natural places where I can just squeeze out my garlic. So you take your bulb, you can just push that right out. Now if you're Used to garlic, it's got that pungent, really strong aroma, but if you taste this now, you could put this right into your mouth. It's just like candy. Be careful with the steam. Steam can burn really fast. So if you start feeling hot, pull away a little bit. To balance off garlic, parsley is always a good option. It helps diffuse the pungentness of the garlic. Even though we've got it sweet, it's still gonna have a little bit of a garlic flavor to it. So I take my parsley here and kind of curl it all up. This is called chiffonade. So we got it really small. Let's get my knife in there and Nice fine chop. We've got all these contrasting colors, the white pierogies, the yellow of the garlic, and the bright green of the parsley. And there's a healthier option for your pierogies. So I want to say thanks to Prospector Foods for providing us with the pierogies, the chicken, the meatballs, and our wonderful sauces. Also Bob's